Hey everybody, back with another video. This is obviously a Defender board set, or maybe it's not obvious, but it is. Um, I was motivated to put this on the bench for a couple reasons. One is, this is my ROM board from my Defender cabinet that I had previously fixed, and I know I adjusted addressed some legs on this thing. There's a couple legs that are questionable on the ROMs. But in my game, I started getting a ROM board error. I have a spare ROM board, so I just swapped it out so my game is up and running. But I wanted to test this and um, figured I'd do a video of it. The other reason is the Arcade Buffet had given me his Defender board set to test out. And so I figured, since I'm going to test my ROM board, so might as well put his board set on the bench and see if we can get it going, if anything's wrong with it. I'm not sure. First thing I noticed is um, there's some RAM missing. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, forty-one, sixteens. I don't know if he tested these, so I'm not going to pull them. I checked to make sure all the chips were in correctly. I got my Williams harness wired up. I do not have the interface board wired up to my jam adapter. Um. Yeah, I mean, let's power this thing up. Actually, let me put some RAM in, and then let's um, power it right, up. I put some RAM in there, and it's mix-matched, and I don't know if Williams Games likes that or not. There's, we've got our four LEDs lit, solid. That's probably not good, I don't think. <laughs> Nothing on the screen there. So, yeah, I think that's uh, something's bad there. Obviously. Okay, I swapped in uh, what I believe to be a known working my spare CPU or MPU board, put in my ROM board, and that's what you're supposed to get. So I don't know, I think he either has a CPU board issue or a ROM board issue, but that's what I was getting on mine ROM failure. And those are the lights that are lit up. So let me read, let me fix my ROM board first. Get a known working ROM board, then we'll put his MPU board back in there and go from there. All right, ROM failure. This is my ROM board, my MPU board spare. And those, those lights there, I think, indicate which ROM is bad. And it says it's IC10. Now I have to look at the schematic or the board layout to see which one is IC10 because it's not labeled on here. Okay, put the ROM, easy things first, verify it, red fine, and it verifies fine as Defender 10. So we're going to have to put, uh, either do signature analysis, probing with logic probe, or use the cat box. Alright, I decided to go ahead and use the cat box. And then we can come over here, go to our setup screen, just basically load our configuration, which is pretty quick. Williams, Defender, Defender New. Alright, open, ROM, start ROM test, and we're getting a failure here on location 2. <clears throat> And I don't know why, because basically I removed this ROM, tested it, test fine, tried a different ROM in there, doesn't doesn't work with the other ROM. Um, so something else is going on. Now, I'm, you know, either signature analysis or I'm going to have to start probing around looking at the schematics at this point. Why is something not working on that ROM? Or, or, or the address lines or something maybe is not connected or something, I don't know. I had replaced this socket before and I just inspected it and it looks okay. Um, so, anyway, I'll come back after. All right, what I'm around. doing is I'm running a ROM test on a good ROM and I'm looping it just so I can see what the behavior is because I looked at this bad ROM and it doesn't look right. Um, we have 
VCC, then I think some address lines. This is a 2532, so that's address 8, I think. 9. Then we have our chip enable. Output enable. Two more address lines. Then data lines. And they're all toggling. Um, so now I'm going to basically stop that. As you can see, I'm watching football right there and behind me. <laughs> um, what do we got going on here? All right, so and then enable the bad the bad one, loop it, start ROM test. So it's failing. And if we do the same thing, we got. Let me see if I can hold this a little bit better here. Those are the two addresses. Yeah, something's going on with that chip enable. So that's that's the um, chip enable. And that should just be low, the output enable. Hmm. I don't know. I'm, let me look at that, uh, that been, line there. It must have been stuck because now it's, it's saying it's passing. A chip located. What the hell? Yeah, before. Look, it says pass 506. Me probing it must have done something. Wacky. So maybe one of those pins is, is jacked up or something. I don't know. Very interesting. When I probed it and I wasn't filming it, like some of the data lines were like stuck high and, and something weird. I don't know why that chip enable is, is um, bouncing around. This one wasn't, but whatever. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> now, now it's working? Oh, boy. All right, well, let's, let me come back. All right, I put the chip back in there, put my CPU back in. Let's see what we got here. Now it looks like it's fine. Um, maybe the interface board is kind of screwed up. Let me reset it. <laughs> I can't remember when I test these before. I don't know why I don't have any sound. Is that soundboard not working? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, anyway, my Defender board's okay. I might look at the schematic. What? What was I probing around, and it probably unstuck some chip. All right, Wacky. just real quick here, um, looking at the soundboard. I don't want to really dive into it too much, but I just checked these fuses. That one does not have continuity. That one does. I'm not going to really screw with it. I'm going to replace the fuse real quick and then uh, test it and then get back to troubleshooting buffet's boards. Well, this is buffet's board, but troubleshooting buffet's ROM board first, and then we'll go back to the CPU. All right, board. replace that fuse. Let's see what happens. We've got some sound, which is nice. 
Go ahead and reset it. Should go. What's going on? So I haven't tested all the sounds yet, but we could probably just hit our testing here real quick. Sounds sounds good. Yeah, it sounds that sounds normal. whatever <laughs> yeah so um i bet this soundboard is fully working so it looks like buffet uh recapped and everything it was just that fuse was blown for some reason i don't know let me think about this nah, i don't even want to dive into it i'm good with it let's swap out i right, got his round board back in just <laughs> And is it working? That's kind of weird. <laughs> it's just in a self test scenario. What is going on? I think the last time I tried powering up, it was um, it was just locking up, wasn't it? Hmm. I'm in a continuous rug pattern here. Let me go ahead and hook up the cat box back up and see if I can read those ROMs. Cat box hooked up. Let's see here. Hopefully you can see that okay. Now I can't see. Start ROM test. Notice the first line here when I'm testing ROM 1 that my CRC will change every time I hit start ROM test. Or now it's telling me. No, it's not ch changing, I guess. Uh, this one did. Did it change that time? Oh, uh, there it got. Yeah. Something's going on. I don't know. I'm get like it's not even consistent. So I might jump right to that PIA. I think um, either that or maybe it's something going on with this cable. I'm not sure, but I know my CPU board's good. So let me test the 6821 probably. All right, I put in a spare 6821. I'm just guessing. Go to ROM, and that's not the problem. <laughs> what the hell? Alright. So now I'm going to have to figure out what is going on here. Can't read the ROMs. And these are red ROMs, so I know that they should uh, verify here. So we got another problem. Hmm. All right, nice little feature here. I'm just looping through the ROM test. Hooked up my Logic Probe and coming to these 2532s or even the 2716s. Let's go one. Address line, address line. That's the chip enable. And right after that, which is address line 10, is floating. And it's the same on all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> address line 10, as you can see here on my little chart, 2716. One, two, three, four, five, six. Address line 10. 
um, is floating somehow. So let me go look where that goes. Houston, we found our problem, I think. Um, so anyway, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you go to 2F pin 11, that should be address line, the buffered address line 10. And you can see, let me move this over here so you can actually see it, hopefully. There's pin 11. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> That's not good, right? I need to replace that uh, ribbon cable, I guess. That sucks, because I really don't feel like doing that. <laughs> ribbon cable, need to desolder this thing. Totally blows. But I'll do that, replace the ribbon cable. I think I have a spare one of these things. Just filming my pain. Basically, there's my um, my work right there. I gotta clean up the um, flux and stuff, but I pulled out each pin by hand, basically, <clears throat> to get that out of there and make sure that I didn't screw up any traces and it doesn't look like I did. So it's pretty good. But that's like a pain in the butt. That probably took me at least 20 minutes, I'm sure. And I haven't even soldered the damn thing in yet, so. All right, I have the uh, ROM board hooked up with the new ribbon cable. Let's, it's got my PIA in it right now. But that's all right. Um, let's go ahead and power it up, see what we get. That, that looked good. Boom. ROM board works. Let's go ahead and re reset it.